How's it going everybody? Now this video is going to be the uh, the for loop challenge and I'm going to show you a program um, and I want you to write a program that does exactly this so it's going to say enter a small integer type so for instance let's say enters 3 I wanted to keep it small numbers for a reason it prints out one, two, three, two, one set of stars. And you run it again. Then it ends after that. Let's say I enter five. It'll print out one, two, three, four, five, four, three, two, one stars. So it goes up to five, it keeps on stair stepping up to five, and then it goes down. That's why I said I wanted to use, use small numbers, because if I type in a hundred, then I get this thing here. Like there's not enough room, so it keeps on going. You know, and then, uh, and so just try to keep it small for now, but you can enter whatever you want. Once you get it to work for the first time, you can just make it print like this, and then hopefully it'll end one day. Okay, that's enough of that. So, if so, if you want to start working on that, pause the video right now or stop it right now because if you're having trouble, I'm going to give you a couple hints, and of course. I'll probably provide you with the solution, so let's get rid of this thing. So the first thing I would focus on is now just try to get the first set. One, two, three, four, five, six. Just try to get this first set here and don't worry about this using one for loop. Then I would use a second for loop that reverses the process. So once you get this first row printed out with whatever means necessary, I recommend you use for loops, which is why I call it the for loop challenge. Hopefully that was a hint. I'd use a second for loop to uh, go backwards and print these stars. So that's it. So just make sure. All right. Now let me show you the code here. So here's the spoiler. If you didn't figure it out, Let's see. Okay. Let's make this big. So here's what I did. I guarantee you, if you have figured this out on your own, uh, your code will probably look a little bit different than mine, which is good. But here's what I did to make it work. First, I declared a variable. Let me make this 200. Okay, so here's my basic stuff here. And in my main function, I made a, a capital integer type. Then I said enter a small integer type, and I gave the user the option to input a value for n. Now, here's my first section here. I made a for loop. Now, all this for loop does is... Uh, First, I'm going to enter this. I said I have two variables right now. I have a and b because I have two. I have an, a for loop inside a for loop. So I have a is equal to zero. Now, when a is less than n, which in this case, just just imagine plugging. Let's say n equals three for right now. Just keep it small. So let's say, uh, well, if zero is less than three, we're going to add one to a at the end. Okay, so right here, I have a new for loop, and I have it b is equal to zero. Well, b has to be less than than or equal to zero before it prints a star. It prints a star because zero is less than or equal to zero. That's going to cycle through. So that's why when you run this on their first the first time, regardless of the number, let's say uh, three. It's always going to print one star. It's going to run through this. The first time you run this program, it's going to run through this here one time. Well, so right now, this very first time we run through here, it exits out of the uh, for this, this for loop here. Then we print the line. Then we end a line here. Then next, we just repeat the process. We enter this for loop again. Because right now, A is now equal to 1 now since we just went through this entire loop. So a now equals 1 in our head. So while 1 is less than 3. 
Well, okay, so we go through here. Now, b is less, 0 is less than or equal to 1, so we print a star. The second time around, you will always print two stars. Then it'll keep on going, because first we're going to go through here again. Oop. So is 1 less than or equal to 1? It is true, so we're going to print a second star. Then we have b equals 2. Is 2 le less than or equal to 1? It's false, we break out. Then we repeat over and over. And that's just to get the print the stars 1, 2, and 3. So let me go ahead and uh, delete this second one here. And then run the program. Okay. So all we're doing here when we first get our first code running, we're just going to print out the first three stars. Okay. Next, we want to print out the, the steps in reverse. Or well, you know the value of n, so you're basically going backwards, and there's a m very few minor changes. So right here, I decide to set c equal to n minus one because I want to de decrease this. So whatever n was, it's going to be two. C is now equal to two in this case because remember we're pretending that the capital n is three to keep things simple in our head. So is two greater than zero? It's true. Now we enter through this one here, and I change this one up a little bit. I change this less than or equal to to greater than or less than c. And then um, it's going to keep on printing until, until d is uh, less than c. So for instance, we have c is equal to 2. Okay, so is uh, 0 less than 2? It's true. So we print out a star. And now d equals 1. Is 1 less than 2? It's true. And we print out two stars. Now d is equal to 3. Is 3 less than 3? 3 is not less than 3, so it will not print out another star. That's why it only prints out two stars the second time around, because that portion of them is false. And then we just keep on repeating. And then that's the end of the program. Oh, and by the way, do you know how many... Uh, just to show you, if I made this 7, do you know how many stars there are? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 15, and then uh, 21. There's actually going to be 49 stars. It's always going to equal uh, n squared. There's always going to be an n squared amount of stars. So if you wanted to add this up to your program, I can see out, end line, end line, oops, control Z, control Z, control Z, okay. And I'm going to say, there are, and this is the last bit, n times n amount of stars. Okay, and that's just a little extra feature. So let's say I type in 3, and it says, there are 9 amount of stars. I'm going to get rid of the amount. And I'm going to get rid of the word of. And I'm going to end the line so we don't see that, uh, that uh, pause statement. Okay. So if I enter 3, there are 9 stars. If I enter 5, there are 25 stars. It's always going to be that many stars. And you can count them yourself, too, if you don't believe me. And I count them, too, to make sure. So let's say we type in one. There are one stars. Here, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put a little parentheses here on this S. If I type in zero, there are zero stars. And you can make this however big you want. You can say if there's 20, there are 400 stars. You can see this big massive pyramid. Yeah, and we can make this whatever we want it to be. So we can say, we can make this B, and we run it. Let's say we enter 4. There are, uh, better make the other one B2. You can also make a character variable and just have it print out the character variable so they can be the same all the time. 6. There's a bunch of Bs. Okay, that's the end of this video. Hope it was helpful.
and hopefully you got a better understanding of the for loop. I know this is a tough one. This is tough at first, especially when you have embedded for loops, because it takes an extra level of thinking, but it's not too bad after a while. You'll get used to it. But we're starting to get the hang of this kind of stuff here, so that's the end of this video.